On today's Locked On Hawkeyes podcast, our final look at the matchup with Purdue coming up tomorrow as Iowa goes on the road looking to make it two in a row in Big Ten play. And Charlie Jones, is the animosity real between the former Hawkeye and his former team? We'll get into that. Also, a breakdown of recruiting. Haven't talked much recruiting. Time to take a look at things. Some commitments, some possibilities on the forefront. Some walk-ons joining the program. We will get into that. Also talk a little basketball recruiting as well and we'll make our picks for the week presented by bet online try to make a little money this weekend all coming up on today's locked on hawkeyes podcast our locked on hawkeyes your daily podcast on the iowa hawkeyes part of the locked on podcast network your team every day Welcome back once again to the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. I'm Trent Condon. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen each and every day. Available wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Google, whatever it is, maybe Stitcher, somewhere else. We got you covered there. And, of course, you can find us on YouTube. Just search Locked On Hawkeyes. Rate, review, subscribe while you're there. To help us out and help us get in front of more Hawkeye fans, your team, each and every day here on the Locked On Network. Today's episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com with promo code Locked On and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Well, thanks for joining us once again on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. A busy week lot going on as we're now hitting that part of the season where both the men's basketball and women's basketball and wrestling overlapping with football. Our concentration, always football first, men's basketball right behind it. And, and anybody that's listening to me, I think understands just how much I love a basketball and Hawkeye basketball. We got a lot, I think, to be excited about here today. We'll break down a little recruiting coming up here this uh, day. A uh, lot to go into both on the recruiting front as Iowa still looking to figure out how they're going to finish up their class, both in men's basketball with it looks like one scholarship still available uh, that they're going to be looking to sign with signing day right around the corner. And of course, football as we get to early December and that signing period there. So we'll talk about that today. We're going to talk plenty about this matchup with Purdue. And it's a game that, you know, it's been so interesting this week when you look at a Purdue team that, as we've talked about, they won four of the last five against Iowa. They've had their number. Jeff Brom, what he's been able to do in game plan and scheme against an Iowa defense that is week in and week out so very good. And last season, you go back to that game and the frustrations that came down, and it was frustration certainly inside of Kinnick Stadium that day. If you remember late in the game, there were some beer ba bottles being thrown onto the field, and uh, one of the offensive linemen for Purdue just uh, decided to take a chug of one. How crazy was that? I mean, college football, you just never know what you're going to get. But it was frustration from what we saw. Iowa finally breaking through, gets that win against Penn State, beats one of the Blue Bloods of the Big Ten, ranked to the top five nationally, up to number two, and and then it just fell apart against Purdue. Not even close. One of the worst games of Spencer Petras's career. He was throwing interceptions all over the place. And now there's people that have the theory that that was maybe the game that broke Spencer Petras and, and they're not going to be a guy that we're ever going to see back at the same level that we saw earlier in his career. It's a theory that is out there. I don't know if I've subscribed to it. I think there's been plenty of holes well before that, but he was not good a year ago against Purdue. And what Brom does, and Jason and I talked about this also earlier in the week, his ability to just not just game plan and scheme and find those soft spots in the zone and, and find what I was doing, but his ability to exploit it. You know, there's something about offensive coordinators, and I think coaches in general, that so often they just become bored with what they're doing. And they go out there and, all right, we got to show everything that we're going to do and look how smart I am, those kind of things. That's not Jeff Brom. What he does is he finds something that is going well. He is going to exploit it. And he has been able to do that time in and time out against Iowa. But, you know, the question this week about Charlie Jones, and really this is a Charlie Jones conversation this week, though there are two wide receivers at Purdue right now that played at the University of Iowa and played for the Hawkeyes a year ago. Tyrone Tracy handled it well is a guy that fell out of favor a year ago, was not the same guy that we saw early in his career. He was struggling with drops. He was struggling with scheme. 
went through it, decided to go back home. It made a lot of sense. You know, you can understand where he was coming through, through from a, a fresh start for him, an opportunity to play in a different kind of offense that maybe is more suited for his skill set. Those are the things that made sense. And he did it right after the season ended. He goes to Purdue. In fact, he came back, came back for the spring game, and he still has friends here and was respected. That's not the case with everybody right now with Charlie Jones. Riley Moss, these are guys that live together, obviously teammates, knew each other incredibly well, and said, yeah, they don't talk. And don't talk because of the way that Charlie Jones handled this. When the rumblings first started about him looking around and a potential and looking for a new destination, it's all well and good when you do it. When you do it before you go through spring practice. That's what rankled some people. Now, personally, I don't have a problem with it. So this is the environment we live in here today. This is the environment that we go through in college sports. And it's the reality that is going to continue for a long time. You don't like your situation. You don't like your offense. You don't like a coach. You can leave. You just get up and go. And that is what we have set up today. Coaches can always leave, right? Nobody had a problem with that. Well, maybe you have a little problem if a guy's leaving your school for a school and you don't see as equal or think they're a rung down, whatever it is. But that aside, coaches can leave. Assistant coaches can leave. Administrators can leave. Athletic directors, they leave all the time. We just saw it this week with Auburn getting Mississippi State's AD the week that they're playing each other in football. These things happen. But in the past, the college athlete, the student athlete had to sit out a year because of the rigors of transfer. Come on. You live in another dorm or new apartment in a different town. It's going to be all right. It was old school thinking and free agency. Like it or not, it is here and here to stay. But it sounds like there was more to Charlie Jones. There was maybe a little bit of deception and, and another angle to this. Riley Moss is going to be ready. Meriwether is going to be ready. Cooper Jean's ready. These guys are ready to go. And it's not that they're going to play dirty because that's not the way Phil Parker's teams play defensively. It's not going to be that, but it is going to be physical. And if there's a chance where Charlie Jones is coming across the middle, and he can lay a hit on him, clean one, not leave with the head, not going to his head, no, not to that. This Iowa defense is going to be ready. Jack Campbell is going to be ready. Jack Campbell, when you hear him after games, win or lose, that guy's out there, and you can tell he knows what it's about to wear, the black and gold. Charlie Jones didn't have that. Now, remember, he also came in as a transfer himself, initially in his career, started his career at Buffalo before he came in. He made a decision to be a wide receiver, to be the best wide receiver that he could be. Purdue was the place for him. They've had guys drafted in the NFL under Brom. Of course, David Bell, Rondell Moore, and a whole bunch more that have gone through there. And you can see, it's an offensive fits. It made sense. But the way that it was handled, I think it bothered a lot of people and is going to add a little bit of juice to this matchup. I'm optimistic for once. I am. I think that, A, Phil Parker has had this one circled. Obviously, the players have had this one circled. This is one that, remember that a year ago, just the euphoric high that we were going through as a fan base, and then to see it fall. And, and not just to lose the game to Purdue, but lose it in that fashion. Just look absolutely dreadful and get blown out against Purdue. That was a stinger. These guys remember. I think you're going to see a good effort. Is it going to be enough? We will see tomorrow. But at the very least, I am confident that this team is going to be ready to go. Can they score enough, though, to win the game? That is to be seen. And that remains the question. The question is, can Iowa put up 21, 24, 27, 20, 31? I don't think so. The good news is Purdue hasn't been great in the defensive backfield. Now, here's another interesting angle of this game, and it's the weather. It looks like it's going to rain in West Lafayette tomorrow. And it's going to be raining right as the game is happening. Maybe dissipate in the second half of the game. Look, I'm no meteorologist. I'm no Schnackenberg. I'm not Ed Wilson. I'm none of those guys. But I think anymore we have the tools that we can at least have a pretty good view of what it looks like. And that's what it looks like right now. Wet football. A little slippery. Difficult to throw. Grass surface. Something that Iowa has not played on this year. We'll see. 
maybe advantage Iowa. Grind it out kind of game. You're going to have to make plays through the air. Petrus, he's got the arm to play in the wind. 23 mile an hour wins in the rain. He's got the strong hands to do it. We will see on the other other side with Aiden O'Connell. You got to chuck it around 45 times in this weather conditions against this Iowa defense. Riley Walsh get that first pick of the year. Cooper Jean pick off number four. How about Quinn Schulte get in the mix? How about a linebacker? Now let's get crazy. Get after O'Connell. He is a guy that is prone to mistake. You get pressure on him, that's when mistakes came. And in fact, it's not just when pressure comes. Looking at some of the numbers from Pro Football Focus, one thing that he's also struggled with is not just that, he has struggled this year when he's had a clean pocket, when there hasn't been pressure, when teams are willing to sit in a zone. Going to have to tighten it up. Going to have to take a couple steps in. Instead of that six, seven, eight yard cushion, it's got to be a little tighter. I think I was ready. Defensively. That's where we are. We continue here and a look at recruiting. Kind of a wild week. I was still out there looking for wide receivers, of course, looking for running backs. They've got a lot of different routes. They picked up a commitment on the defensive line. Also, we get a former Hawkeyes son that is committed to play for the Hawkeyes as a walk-on. We'll talk about that. Also, a little basketball recruiting. We'll talk some hoops as Monday. It will be the beginning of the regular season. Saw the exhibition game earlier this week. We'll talk about that. Aaron Euless will be back. Plenty of basketball, plenty of recruiting. That's as we continue. This is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. This episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to spice up college football season. It is a great time and a great weekend for college football. Lots of different ways that you can go. Easy to do. Go to the website, create account, all kinds of different ways to play with Underdog Fantasy. One of the easiest ways is just over-unders in yardage totals, touchdowns, things of the like for college players in each individual game. Coming up this week, of course, the monster matchup is between Georgia as they play host to Tennessee. I'm looking forward to this game. Should be great. So this is how it goes. Very simple. Higher or lower. Hand in hooker. 271 and a half yards passing. That's all you do. Put it in. Jalen Hyatt, who's got like a billion touchdowns this year, 73 and a half yards receiving. Stetson Bennett, the quarterback for Georgia, 293 and a half is his passing. Higher or lower, put them together, and that is how you play at Underdog Fantasy. Available in over 30 states, just pick between two and five players on any team, and not just your team, and decide if they will finish higher or lower with the given total. Sign up with promo code Locked On, all one word, Locked On. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. Think of that. Deposit $100, you get $100 free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or Google Play Store. That's Underdog Fantasy. Promo code locked on. One word locked on. Get in on college football. Pick them action today with Underdog Fantasy. Trent Cotton back with you once again on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen. For your second listen, don't forget about Locked On Sports Today. It is a great podcast that gets you covered on everything going on. What a game five tonight in the World Series. Uh, that was incredible to watch. You can go beyond the scoreboard, behind the scenes, local experts, insights. Only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, or wherever. You get podcasts as we roll through here. A interesting week in the world of recruiting. Now, recruiting is a weird business. I'll be honest. Back in the day, I was big into recruiting. I, I love the stuff. I, I couldn't get enough of it. I was a subscriber to all the websites, and I still am. And <laughs> have money going out there uh, to all the websites out there. But you know, the guys at twenty four seven, David Eichold, uh, a guy that I know really well, has been on my radio show for years. Tom Caker to Hawker Report. You know, these guys do an incredible job in the recruiting front. I'm not as into it as I once was, but I do call high school football, and I do that. I call high school sports all throughout the year. I do baseball. I do wrestling. I do basketball and football, of course, during the fall. And with that, I get an opportunity to see these guys. I feel like I have a pretty good gauge and a pretty good feel of what's a D1 player. Now, the gap and the difference between some guys, and I watch some guys and say, boy, you know, he doesn't have back schools even after him. There's times that that... Leaves you scratching your head a little bit, but 
Yeah, I'm not scouting. That's not what I am. I'm broadcasting a game. So one guy, though, that's always stood out to me, going back to his sophomore year, is Jalen Thompson at Dowling Catholic. And I do a ton of Dowling Catholic games. I'll, I'll be calling their games, I'm sure, at the Unidome coming up this week if they get another win and punch their ticket back to the semifinals once again. He's a guy that has good size, good frame. And his dad, a guy new at Iowa, Rod Thompson. Uh, we were uh, freshmen the same time, had a couple of classes together. So knew Rod a little bit and makes me feel very old, and I'm sure Rod as well, that his son is getting ready now to play football as a former basketball player at the University of Iowa. But one thing that is so intriguing about him is it still feels like there's even more upside to him. Preferred walk-on. This is a kid that had D1 offers. Northern Illinois had offered him. And yet he ultimately decided he's going to walk on, try to earn a scholarship with the Hawkeye program. Those are the kind of guys that you certainly need. Another guy that they got this week in the walk-on realm is Watts McBride from Cedar Rapids, Washington. Now, haven't seen him play in person. Did watch uh, some of his huddle film. Really impressive. I mean, he just has the look of the next, oh, I just mentioned Quinn Schulte earlier in the show, right? The walk-on safety goes out there by the time he's an upperclassman. and plays special teams early on. Hey, look at this guy. He's starting to pop. And all of a sudden, you got a guy that's a you know a couple years starter. That feels like you know, we get so many of these guys. And, and maybe Watts McBride is that guy. He also had an offer from Nebraska. Now, Scott Frost has been fired. Is that offer still there? Most people don't believe it is. But regardless, another high-level walk-on, and that's a big, big part of this Iowa program. You need that. But you also need to supplement it with some other dudes. So they're looking at running back. They look, they want to bring one in. Had the kid from Florida that was committed for a while. He decommitted about a month ago. So they're out there. And they're looking all over the place. So they find this kid from New Orleans, Arnold Barnes, big dude, a thick. And not listed huge, but he just watching him play, watching the film on him, he's got some size to him. Takes a visit this past weekend. He's in Iowa City, had glowing things to say. Tom Cakert of Hawkeye Report, part of the Rivals Network, he, in fact, put in a future cast saying that he believed that he was going to be a Hawkeye. And then, less than a day later, he gets committed to Nebraska. A Nebraska program that has fired their head coach, that you don't know who the coach is going to be, a lot of people screaming NIL. If it is, that is the way of the world. As we talked about earlier with transfers, same thing here with NIL. That very well could be the case. And if it is, Iowa needs to continue to work to figure it out. The Swarm Collective, that is one place that I know they are doing that work and putting that kind of work in. And if you have the ability to do it and you want to do it, help out with the Swarm Collective. It is something that is going to be very important to the future of Iowa athletics. So that's one that maybe isn't over yet. Commitment can't sign until December. Keep an eye on that. Also a kid from Florida, another running back uh, that was in Kamari Moulton had some good things to say at a Florida wide receiver in six foot three, Jarek Bowie uh, that came in on a visit last weekend. Again, good things to say. It's very rare that you're going to find guys. Say, yeah. Well, the visit was terrible. I mean, come on. You're 17, 18 year olds, years old. And you're going and hanging out with the football team in Iowa city. If you don't have a good time, that's on you. You got your own problems if that's what it is. But uh, just a couple of names to throw out there. On the basketball front, they are looking to add one more, one more big before signing day comes up next week on the basketball front. Uh, Laji Dembele is a guy from up in the Northeast uh, that they're looking at. He's apparently going to be taking a unofficial visit this weekend to Rutgers. Uh, Seton Hall was involved, a couple other schools from the Northeast, but that's one to keep an eye on. Couple of the bigger targets they were after uh, swung and missed on them, but they already have Owen Freeman, Brock Harding committed in this class, along with Price Sanford uh, for my neck of the woods over here in Central Iowa. Of course, his brother Peyton. We see fill it up on the outside, and Price, he's a fun, fun player to watch. A little more wiggle to his game, a little more athleticism, a little more bounce, and he has grown immensely uh, throughout his career. I saw him a couple of years ago when he was out there with that Waukee State Championship team with the Waukee Northwest squad after the high school uh, split into two a year ago, and he'll be back for his senior year. In fact, speaking of Waukee, both Northwest and Waukee High, oh, they are going to be both loaded this year. Should be a lot of fun watching basketball here in central Iowa across the state. We got some big changes also. We got a shot clock coming. The association, the boys in Boone, are actually doing brackets the right way and waiting towards the end of the season before they put those things out and what the pairings are going to be, a tip of the ball cap to that. So good things coming in basketball. And we'll keep our eye out on the basketball and the football recruiting front. But just a little bit of an update for you. 
Caden Proctor, I've seen him a bunch uh, this season, really throughout his career. I uh, probably called, I don't know, a half dozen, maybe eight of his games throughout his career. He is as advertised. I mean, he is a day one starter. I, I don't see anything short of injury. And the struggles that I was had this year at the tackle position that is going to keep him away from being a starter. We'll be at left tackle right away. You know, could it be a guy like Tristan Wirfs that was a right tackle initially and ended up sticking there? That very well could be the case. We'll see on that front or even start him inside and move him outside. That's something in the past. But because of the woes this year of that offensive line, I, I think there's a big opportunity for him to go out there right away. Also, the kid from Indianapolis, a four-star uh, lock who, because of Caden Proctor, doesn't get a whole lot of love. Remember, this is also a kid that had offers from Ohio State, from Notre Dame, from Michigan. This was a highly regarded guy, 6'6", 270 pounds. Will he be ready to go right away? We'll see but adding those building blocks. They did it. They had so many misses in the 2019 and 2020 classes on the offensive line. They really need that to happen, and they need those young guys to come in, be ready to go. David Davidkoff, maybe he can get healthy and get back there on the field. Some hope for the future of the offensive line. And that's the great thing about recruiting, right? It gives you hope. It might not come to fruition, but at minimum, you have some hope. Well, we got hope coming up this weekend. Iowa against Purdue, optimistic at least a little bit. Maybe it's just for a day. I'm not positive. We're going to see. We're going to break that one down. We're going to make our picks. It's presented by Bet Online. A look at the games of the Big Ten. Of course, the big national games coming up this week. How's it play out? Let's make some money. We'll do it as we continue. This is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Trent Connor back with you one final time on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Again, thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen each and every day. If you're listening on Apple, wherever it may be, if you can, rate, review, five stars. That's what we're looking for. Hit those five stars. Help us out. Help us move up the charts. On top of it, of course, YouTube for the people that are watching me down here in the man cave. I got my boys, BJ Armstrong, Roy Marble, Ed Horton over my shoulder. On one side, on the other side, got the... Kiddick Stadium, the day that they wrestled outside and excited for wrestling season. We're going to talk about that, obviously, also coming up. Women's basketball, we got a lot going on, but you have an opportunity to see us each and every time we do the podcast on YouTube. While you're there, hit the subscribe button. It helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. As we wrap up today, time for some recruiting. Excuse me, some betting. As I was looking over there. Yeah, time for some betting. Now, this has not been a great season for me. I'll, I'll be honest. College football, I have struggled. And I'm heating up this week. So I have played five college games this week. Maxion, both games and totals. Hit tonight. One of the two games. Four one in the week in college football. But it's been a struggle in college football. And it fell, in fact which is a rarity. That's where I made my money this year in betting. I've been a sports gambler for a long time. In fact, a little story time with your boy Trent Condon here. My first ever bet, speaking to the guys over my shoulder, they were on the team. The year, I believe it was 1988. It was the LaFester Rhodes game. And for you old timers out there, you remember that game. Now, I was a young kid. I was in elementary school. I didn't know much about Iowa State. And growing up in the 80s, even in Osage, a farm community, closer to Ames than Iowa City, outside of a couple of people, it was all Hawkeye fans. I mean, that's all it was. It was a 90-10 split between Hawkeye fans and Cyclone fans back there. But one of the 10% was my dad's buddy, Tom Kleckner. And Tom, single guy, liked to play a little loose playing gambling and we kept it very simple there was no point spread involved he just said hey you want to bet i said what's that five bucks who wins the game well i was not going to lose to iowa state in my seven-year-old brain that's how i thought it well this is easy five dollars sure Gabe goes on, LaFesta Rhodes goes off for 54 iowa loses a tight one and i'm down five dollars and very quickly his hand was out Where's the money? As the game went final, tears welling up in my eyes. Not only did Iowa lose, now I owe the guy five bucks. That was my first gambling experience. LaFesta Rhodes against the Hawkeyes. And it's continued since then. I love gambling. I love sports wagering. 
Now, I am not a huge player in terms of money spent. I'm just as happy. In fact, I'm, I'm more happy betting 10, 20 bucks a game as opposed to hundreds of dollars. I've been there before. I don't like the feeling. I like the feeling of just seeing at the end of the season, can I beat the book? Can I work ahead over the course of the season? That's enough for me. Bet Online has you covered with that and a place that you can go to make your wagering. So coming up this weekend, as I said, college has not been kind to me. I'm grabbing the points with Iowa, though. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. We will see. I'm grabbing the points. I'm I'm buying into this week that this Iowa team is going to be ready to go, that the defense is fired up. Phil Parker has figured something out schematically, perhaps, against Purdue. Whatever they need to do to tighten it up, I am a believer this week. I'm going to grab the points with Iowa. Two in the Big 12 I really like. In fact, my first bet of the week going back to Sunday was the TCU-Texas Tech game. Of course, TCU, right number seven in the playoff committee. Uh, many people believe they should have been higher. They're undefeated. They have beat four consecutive ranked teams. Now, those teams aren't ranked anymore. Kansas isn't ranked anymore. Oklahoma's not ranked anymore. That's a story for another day. But that aside, TCU's been fun to watch. And they're doing it with an Iowa at quarterback and Max Duggan. Dual threat, gets up and down the field. He's got a great receiver in Quentin Johnson. But Texas Tech, they're inconsistent. There's no doubt about it. Texas Tech has been Jekyll and Hyde all season long. I mean, just go back to a week ago. They're absolutely obliterated by Baylor. The week before, they kill West Virginia, 48-10. to 10. Oklahoma State down to the wire. Had a chance against Kansas State. Beat Texas by three. It's inconsistent. They've had three different quarterbacks. They've had injuries all over the place. If it was me, Morton would be my guy. He's the young guy out of that quarterback group. In fact, I hope he's the one that gets to start against TCU. It just has that feeling that this is going to be something where maybe TCU sweating a little bit and they've sweat plenty and they give up big plays. I like the matchup here. I'm going to grab the points. Give me Texas Tech plus the eight. One more in the Big 12. I also really like this week. This is one of those matchups where it just doesn't make sense. Kansas State, after what they did a week ago against Oklahoma State, beating them 48 nothing against this Texas team, that just isn't quite right. They're just not quite there. The spread's two and a half. In Manhattan, Texas favored by two and a half. It's a head scratcher. And when it makes sense, well, of course, I'm going to grab the two and a half with Kansas State. Why wouldn't you? They're at home. They played so well last week. That's what you have to be careful about. As a longtime degenerate, I will tell you, these are the ones you got to sniff them out from time to time. And I sniff this one out. I think something stinks here. I will take Texas and I will lay the two and a half. A couple more. Of course, the big ones in the SEC coming up this week. You got Tennessee going to Georgia. I lean right now, Georgia. Tennessee, great story. I'll be rooting for them. If I had to make a pick, though, that is the direction that I am leaning. And then late, give me LSU in the points against Alabama. I'm going to grab the 13 and a half there. I think this is going to be more of a low-scoring game, more of a physical type of game. Brian Kelly, he's not had the athletes to compete when he was at Notre Dame with Alabama. He's still not there. He doesn't have the program, obviously, in year one at the spot that I think it's going to be. Brian Kelly, he's an a-hole. He's a psychopath. But the dude knows how to coach football. He's going to get there. I had this conversation on my radio show this week. Brian Kelly win a national championship in the next five years? I think he does. And he could look goofy dancing like he did with the recruits and all the things that he's doing. But ultimately, the guy can coach football. If he gets the right talent in there, and finds the right quarterback, he's going to be there. I think they got a little something this week, and they hang around against Alabama. Those are the picks here for this week, brought to you by Bet Online. Go to betonline.com right now for your opportunity to take a look at all the games going on across the Big Ten, Big 12, ACC, SEC, all across college football. They have you covered at Bet Online. Line. Let's have the Hawks get a victory here. I'm on my way, getting on a bird. I'll be heading to Las Vegas for the weekend. You'll see instant reaction of uh, the little one minute clip that we do after the game. That will be coming to you uh, from Las Vegas and be back with you on Monday night after Iowa plays basketball. We'll also get you updated on everything that happened over the weekend. A little bit different schedule coming up next week, but we got you covered here on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Your team every day. For your second listen every day, don't forget about Locked On Sports Today. Your next listen, it is a great place to go. It has the biggest stories of the day, instant reaction, big game recaps, and as always, their take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever 
you get podcasts. Let's go get a win this weekend. Let, let's get last week against Northwestern was one thing, right? It was home. It was homecoming. They're bad. Now that Purdue is great, but let's get this monkey off your back, right? Let's beat the teams that we feel like we shouldn't be losing four out of five. Go out there, get a victory. Offense really show that last week was not a blip. It was not just a great game against a bad opponent. There was more there. Let's get hopeful for the rest of the year and hope for some bowl eligibility. That's what we're looking for this week. Five stars. That's what we're also hoping for from you. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. We'll talk to you next week. This is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Go Hawks!